Hey everybody, I'm coming to you from sunny central Florida today. I'm installing a battery isolator in my 2001 Chevy Astro van. So by the end of this video, you should know what a battery isolator is, how it works, why you should have one, and how to install it. So let's get started. Woo. So there are two basic types of battery isolators. This kind is the diode kind, which uses these giant heat seat fans. And as you can see, it's pretty big. Uh, there are no moving parts in this one, which make it pretty reliable. Though from what I understand, they are a little more sensitive to heat than the relay type, which is the stinger here. And uh, the way these guys work is they have a little solenoid in there that opens and closes when triggered by the, uh, by the ignition on uh, power source. And uh, because these ones do have moving parts, they are technically a little less reliable, though there are plenty of people who have had them installed in their vehicles for the life of their vehicles and have not had a problem. Um, the pros and cons of these are obviously size is one, but also this diode type uses, uh, uses a little more electricity than the, than the relay based type and it actually converts it into heat, which is why it needs these giant heat sink fans. So with the diode based type, you, uh, you're, you're never able to fully charge your battery depending on where the voltage regulator is in your vehicle. On mine, it's on the alternator, so uh, it definitely, the diode based type will not fully charge either of my batteries. But if your voltage regulator on your vehicle happens to be on one of the batteries or somewhere in the electrical circuit after the alternator, then uh, you, you should actually be able to charge both your batteries and the diode type might be a better option for you. They are a little more uh, technically more reliable. So the way these things work is when they are powered, they, uh, they use the charge from the alternator to charge both your starting battery and your auxiliary battery. But when power is not going to the device to uh, close the circuit, then the two are completely separate, which means that you can power things from your auxiliary battery and it will not draw power from your starting battery which means that you will always have enough juice on your starting battery to keep going. So another benefit of these things is that if you if you do drain your main starting battery uh, you can bridge the connection between the two the auxiliary battery and the starting battery and use the power of both to start the vehicle. So if you're in a situation, say you're out uh, boondocking somewhere and you drain your starting battery and there's no one around to give you a jump, all you have to do is bridge the connection and uh, as long as you have enough juice on both batteries to start your engine, you should be good to go. So it's also a safety device that way. Now battery isolators come in different amp rating. You want to base the, the amp rating on the battery isolator based on what you're using it for, not for the uh, not for your alternator on your vehicle. And when you're choosing the size of the fuse for the size of the wire, you want to uh, make sure that the fuse matches the wire and not the load. The fuse is for the wire that you're using. So there are plenty of charts, and I will attach one in the uh, in the description a link that you can you can choose to. Uh, click on and check out to figure out what size fuse you need for the size wire you need and the size wire you need depends on how much power you're using so the wire size goes for how much power you're using and the fuse goes for the size wire okay so this is going to be a nice and simple install all we have to do is take one wire from the positive on the battery to one of the poles and it's okay to reverse these on this particular model and then take the other pole that goes to the auxiliary battery and then one of these little poles is going to be a ground to the body, which on this one goes directly to the chassis. Uh, through a ground wire, I've got zero gauge ground wires throughout this thing. And uh, the other one goes to what they call a true ignition source, which is a power source. Uh, I'll be tapping off another wire, which I haven't determined yet, but I'll show you in a second that uh, has power through the ignition cycle, which means that it's not powered when the key is in the accessory position or the off position. It's, it's only powered while you're starting and while, uh, while the engine is running. So let's get started. Woo! Now whenever you're working on a vehicle, it's always a good idea to disconnect the negative battery terminal first. And the reason for that is if you cross two wires that aren't supposed to cross, you can, you can fry your wiring harness, you can fry a computer, you can start a fire, you could possibly get shocked, just like this. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I didn't get shocked. I'm just gonna disconnect this real quick and then uh, I'll be right back and we'll get started. Okay, so I've got the negative battery terminal disconnected and I made sure to put the, uh, put the cables in such a way that they're not gonna fall back into place and touch the negative battery terminal. And when you do this, you wanna make really sure, and I've actually done this before and I don't know if I hurt the battery or not, 
but either use short tools, which you cannot touch the positive to the negative battery terminal, or uh, do it in such a way where you're not gonna you're not gonna touch both with the with anything metal at the same time, because you can do some serious damage to your battery here. So just be careful of that. So I forgot to buy an extra uh, fuse for the zero gauge wire, so I only have one fuse, but I do have this wire and. Uh, and few, this four gauge wire and fuse that I'm gonna use to go from the positive battery terminal to the device here. So I've, I've cut it to length and I've got it pretty much where I want it. The only thing is I have one more solder point to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mock set this up. Okay, so I'm gonna go solder this real quick. I'll show you guys how that's done. This is really fun. All right, so this is the fun part because we get to use a blowtorch. Fire, fire. Yes. So this fitting fits on this wire a little loose. So what I'm gonna do is pop this side under this side a little bit. So I just hit this with the hammer and try not to hit my thumb. All right, see how it's folding under? So I'm gonna set it sideways Give it a good tap. There, see it's folded under quite a bit. Can you see that? So now I'm going to solder the connection, but I do not have a bench vise, so I have used imagination and uh, stuck this one by two in the back of my van and clamped it down. So I'm going to show you how to do this real quick. I'm wearing safety glasses and uh, gloves. <clears throat> Don't mess around with your body, man. You only got it for so long, you know what I mean? So I'm going to light this blowtorch real quick. I'm just going to heat this guy up and make sure you don't heat up the, uh, the insulation on the wire. You're just trying to get the fitting nice and hot so that when you drop the solder on there, it just falls on and melts right in. See, it just melts right in. All right, so the solder job is done and it's nice and strong, not going anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install this guy real quick. So I've installed from the positive battery terminal up to the fuse and to the, uh, to the battery isolator here. So the next step uh, is going to be the hardest one and running a wire from this terminal all the way back to the auxiliary battery in the back right of the van. So the first step uh, is to figure out the routing and put it in place. So I've got about 17 feet of the zero gauge wire. And uh, I, I guess actually probably the smartest thing to do is put the fitting on one end, which I'm going to attach to the, um, to the battery isolator and then run the rest through to figure out what exact length I need. And by the way, my auxiliary battery is all the way in the back passenger side. So we've got quite a ways to run this cable. Now I don't have any kind of uh, uh, anything to cover this to protect it. So I'm gonna have to go without it for now, but later on I will definitely, I think it's called conduit, I'll definitely be getting some to protect, protect this wire because it's going to be underneath the van and uh, prone to a lot of vibration. It really needs to be protected because this, this insulation on this wire is pretty soft. Okay, so now I've got it uh, bolted in up here and uh, I've got the wire routed down under the engine cavity. Now I just have to route it all the way to the back. It's gonna be really difficult to show how I routed this thing, but this is the wire. Oh, wait, where is it? Is that it? No, it's back. Ah, I can't reach my hand back there. You can see the, the blue I'm pointing at right now. And uh, so it's all the way away from the exhaust manifold and the engine. And then, oh, man, it's so tight down here. Ugh. Oh, sorry about this crazy camera. And then it just goes up. Uh, there's holes in the frame rail. See that hole right there, right in the center of the screen? See where it's going through? Well, it goes through that rail all the way through. So it ends up coming out right here. And what I'm going to do is drill a hole under there and use a rubber grommet so it doesn't rub and stick the wire straight through and then uh, cut off the excess, attach a fuse and disconnect the negative battery terminal on the auxiliary battery and hook this thing up. So I've determined that I want it right about here which is not in the way of this uh, whatever this piece of trim is called, I guess piece of trim, uh, under the carpet. So that's clear right there, I can drill a hole. Now I'm gonna peel underneath and see if it's a good place 
to drill through, make sure there's nothing in the way. It looks like I gotta go back a little bit because there is a double plate, which will be a little harder to drill through. And it's not flat, so I can't put a grommet. I just gotta feel out and uh, try to match my two fingers. I'm gonna mark this spot with a Sharpie. Okay, the spot's marked. Now I'm gonna drill a small hole for the pilot and uh, get a much bigger drill bit that fits this uh, double zero size cable and drill it through and try to stick it through and see how it works. One small correction, I am drilling for the size of the grommet, not the size of the wire, and actually a little smaller than this so it fits in nice and tight. The grommet is not gonna work for this because the metal that I drilled through is too thick. So I'm using this, uh, it's like plastic sheath to go over the cable and through the hole, just, just in case, I, I use the Dremel for it so there's no sharp edges, but I just wanna make sure that it doesn't wear through. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna do, and then I'm gonna get some clear sealant and seal around this hole so that it is uh, nice and watertight because this is right behind the back tire, so there's gonna be water splashing up there. Okay, so my battery died on my camera, so I had to charge it and get something to eat real quick. As you can see, it is now dark out. Uh, this is actually the hard part. <laughs> I was wrong before. The hard part is getting to my auxiliary battery down here and getting the positive terminal hooked up with what little space I have. So I'm gonna do that real quick and uh, then we'll get started on the front. Okay, so I've really gone through a great effort to make this video as helpful as possible. If you could uh, find it in your heart to help me out a little bit and give me a big thumbs up on this, I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, so this fuse panel is, uh, or fuse is in place, and I put it in a place that's easy to see, so I can see if it's blown, and also easy to replace if need be. And uh, one more thing you need to know about safety is that when you fuse something, you always put it either right next to the load or right next to the source. In this case, the source being the alternator, the load being the auxiliary battery. So I decided I'm going to do the ground first, and since the ground is going from one of these two, and uh, this is a perfect ground point right here. I'm just gonna cut a little cable and uh, some fittings here that go uh, from one spot to the other. Let's see if that can zoom. There we go. I am going to take the easy route and uh, take apart this fuse panel real quick and find the ignition wire, which I've looked on the, uh, on the fuse panel and I, know, I will know exactly which one it is once I get it flipped over here. Um, and I'm going to tap into that with, I don't know what these are called, but I will show you what it is. Hopefully I can get it to focus. Let's see where's the focus button. There we go. Look at this guy. I don't know what this is called, but it just, uh, you just strip the wire just a tiny bit and you stick this thing through the, into the wire. And then you stick the new one that you want to, uh, join with it right in there and you fold this guy over and you close it and lock it and it's good to go. Okay, so in order to find a good location to uh, tap into for the power wire for the relay, I've removed the negative battery terminal and uh, pulled apart the fuse box here and reconnected the negative battery terminal so I can use my multimeter to find a source. I've identified this wire and it goes from the ignition to the uh, air conditioning um, enabling what do they call it? Enabling relay or something like that? Yeah, an AC enable relay. So this is only hot when uh, when the engine is running. So I'm going to use this one, and I'm just going to use that little thing that I showed you and uh, get that done. Okay, so it's now installed, and you can see the battery is clearly charging. It's actually charging pretty high. I don't know if that's too high. I'm going to have to check on that. Let's go check on the uh, auxiliary battery. So I just turned the... Uh, power inverter on and it said 12.5 what's it at now 14.6 it works Woo! job well done I'm gonna go check and see if 14.6 uh, is too high for the alternator I don't remember the numbers